Everybody say, go get those blessings. When you rock with the Spirit of God, your hands change like this. Strength in the prayer, when you all work together, it's gotta be love. And still, I give him the highest praise. Then do it then, come on, hallelujah. What's up, y'all? What's up? God is good. What's up, everybody that's in here? What's up to everybody online that's watching? Uh, hallelujah. <laughs> Shout out to Winifred. What's up, Winifred? <laughs> yeah, God is amazing. So today's message is called Never Ending Story. Never Ending Story with God. Never Ending Story with God. Hallelujah. So uh, who knows what that means up there? Y'all know what that means? Yeah. You only live once. You only live once. All right, so texting and Twitter, Instagram uh, have changed the way people communicate, obviously. You know what I mean? They only give us like what? It's like 140 like letters to, like, to put out there, right? And to create a word. So you got to kind of like whatever you're going to say, you got to figure out how to make it like a little smaller, okay? Shorthand terms like YOLO. All right. You only live once. All right. And then uh, what's R-O-F-L? Y'all know that one? Rolling on the floor, laughing, rolling on the floor. Uh, and then if somebody do something, you know, like you think is weird or they did something crazy, SMH. You know what I mean? Like I'm just shaking my head. You know what I mean? You put that down, right? There's uh, another acronym that fits all of these pretty good. And that's YOLO. You know what I'm saying? You only live once. Now, YOLO. I get it. People say you only live once, but a lot of people use it when they're about to do something really crazy. <laughs> you know what I mean? She was like, mm-hmm. They're about to do something really crazy, really dangerous, and really nuts. And so they're just like, hey, dude, just do it, man. YOLO. You know what I mean? <laughs> and the person does it. Now, go after your dreams. Do things that are positive, but you don't got to do something dangerous because you got to look at it like YOLO, meaning you only live once on earth, right? So you do only live once on earth, but then... We go to heaven and we're still going. That's the never ending story with God. Never ending story with God. So as believers, we live again. So we got to make sure whatever way we live in here on earth, God wants us to live it to the fullest, to the fullest. Okay. Live it to the fullest and forever in heaven we will go. All right. It's a love story, a dream come true, life changing experience that you start here on earth. When you uh, invite Jesus into your heart, you started here. And then you have this wonderful time on earth and then you go to heaven, right? That's the YOLO that we need to be thinking about. You only live once, so make sure you're living for God. Because of Jesus and what he did on the cross, we can live forever in heaven, right? Forever in heaven. But the story, your story, your loving story starts now, all right? Your story with God starts now. Everybody say starts now. That's right. That's right. All right. So all the divine mystery revealed heaven, the streets paved with gold, all of that stuff. We think about that. Like what's up in heaven, right? I'm sure we all think about it. Y'all all thought about like what's going to happen in heaven. You know what I mean? What's it going to look like? You know what I mean? I think about that all the time, especially when you grew up in church. Cause people talk about it all the time. So of course you think about it and you're like, yo, what is that? And it's a goal for us. Our goal as Christians is to get up there, see Jesus's face. Right? To see Jesus, all the stuff we read about, we want to see it, right? We're just like, oh, I can't wait. That's the goal to get to. And that's that never ending story because you're there forever and ever, ever, <laughs> right? You're up there forever. So, of course, we dream and think about it. What does it look like? Will I see my family members that have gone up there? You know what I mean? You know, how will I feel in that moment worshiping Jesus? All right, we hear about that so much in the Bible. I'm intrigued by its beauty and I'm in awe of what's to come. You know what I mean? So I dream about it. Sometimes I dream about heaven. Anybody ever dream about heaven? Anybody in here? Oh, yeah? Yeah, amen, amen. So you know those uh, vacation destination commercials, right? When you see a Jamaican, you know, Jamaica, come to Jamaica, come to Brazil, you know, come to Disney World, you know, that type of commercials. Everybody's smiling. Everybody's happy. I just want to show Mickey real quick. I want to show. I want to give y'all an example of what this is about and how fun it looks. 
Look how happy they look. <laughs> what they said at that that was so beautiful i don't know who wrote that commercial but shout out to you if you happen to be watching this just randomly but um, it says tomorrow begins today that is awesome like that's a, a very good quote to say tomorrow begins today i might even want to write that down write that down tomorrow begins today all right look we that we should feel that same way about heaven like, I'm so excited to go. Like, when you tell a kid, we're going to Disney World. We're going to Disneyland. They freak out, right? They're, like, super excited. They're smiling. Have you any y'all been there before? Anybody been there? Okay, right. So, you know, when you're driving up, right, you start seeing, like, the ducks, right? And you start seeing all of Mickey Mouse and all those things, right, in the street. And it's called, like, uh, Mickey Mouse Lane and, and, and Donald Duck Row. And you start seeing all this stuff and kids are freaking out as they're going up the street. They're freaking out, right? Because they're so super excited about it. Now, imagine if there was a commercial for Jesus. A commercial for Jesus. That would be so awesome if we had that. That would be great. I would, I would love to see a commercial for heaven. You know what I mean? Turn to John chapter 14, uh, verse 2. You know? Let's get into this word. <laughs> John chapter 14, verse 2. <clears throat> Hallelujah. I let y'all get there. Shout out to everybody on here. We're talking about a never ending story with God. Okay. John chapter 14, verse two, it says in my father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you, a place for you. All right. So there's a place for us. You know, when you go into Disneyland, you go into these vacation spots, wherever you're going, there's a room for you, a hotel for you, a place where you're going to stay. Right. Then. Other things about heaven that I want to talk to you about that could be, you know, in Revelations, they talk about heaven and what it looks like, right? And that's how we get so excited, you know what I mean? Because, like, the Bible is our commercial, you know what I mean? That's our commercial for it when we say we want a commercial. So as we are imagining all of this that they're talking about, all right? So in Revelations uh, chapter 21, verse 19 through 20. Right. I'll just read a, a little bit about like what the walls look like. All right. All right. The foundations of the city walls were decorated with every kind of precious stone. The first foundation with Jasper, the second with Sapphire. Right. And so it's all these beautiful stones and glitter. And you know what I mean? Like it looks amazing. It's flashing at you. Right. Just like a kid going through Disneyland and hearing all the songs. You know what I mean? That's how you're going to feel. It's going to feel so much happy. Right. It's great. Then also, too, it says when you read down a little bit further, the great street of the city was gold. I'm sure y'all heard of that. Streets of gold. Right. Yeah. Streets of gold. Like, you know, gold is shiny, it's beautiful. Every street is gold. So when you walk outside, you just see like this gold shiny. What? That's how it's going to look in heaven. That is amazing. Amazing. The great street of the city was of gold as pure as transparent glass. So, you know, when you see glass or you walk past a window, you kind of can see your face, right? You could kind of see. So imagine that. You just walk out and see your reflection in the street. <laughs> that is beautiful. That is beautiful. All right. So, uh, and then it goes on to say that in heaven, there will be no more sun or moon. Now that's deep. No more sun or moon. Okay. So no more daytime, nighttime, right? The glory of God and the light of the lamb, Jesus, will be its illumination. Okay, so it's powered up by Christ. It's powered up by the divine, powered up by God's love. So it's shining all the time. It's a beautiful day all the time. How many of y'all been to the beach or, or seen a beautiful day, right? Imagine that beautiful day every day. <laughs> every day in life is going to be a beautiful day as you wake up. This is the never ending story that I'm talking about that you're going to have with God, but it starts now. It starts now, right? So beautiful, so beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. The city had no need of the sun or the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God illuminated it. The Lamb is its light, 
and the nations of those who are saved shall walk in its light and the kings of the earth bring their glory and honor into it. Its gates shall not be shut at all by day. There shall be no light. There's no night there, no night, no darkness, nothing, right? In the middle of his street and on either side of the river was the tree of life. Now, this is, I love this part, the tree of life, right? Which bore 12 fruits, each tree yielding its fruit every month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations, right? In a world that is riddled with sickness and disease, the description of this tree, right? This description of this tree is a beautiful reminder that there is no more suffering there is no more sickness in heaven. So when you get there, you're not going to be like, <coughs> none of that's going to go on, right? None of that's going to happen. I woke up, I fell a little, you know what I mean? None of that. You know what I mean? Nobody getting sick in your family. None of that. We're all going to live forever, look young and happy. It's just going to be such, and worshiping God. So just like when you were in Manna just a few minutes ago, and it felt so good, and you were singing up there, did a great job, right? And we're singing, right? That's going to happen like 24-7. You're going to wake up to choirs and all this beautiful music saying how much they love the Lord. I, I mean, that's just, just the thought of it right now is beautiful to me. It gets me emotional. You know what I'm saying? It's so beautiful, all right? They shall see his face. Finally see his face. See his face, God's face. We, we're, we're down here praying about it all the time, and then we finally get to see his face, his face. And his name should be on their foreheads, all right? On their foreheads. Boom, all right? I love you, Jesus. I love you, Lord. Oh, my goodness. And there should be no night there. Again, they need no lamp nor light of the sun, for the Lord God gives them light. Okay, so no light bill. You ain't got to worry about <laughs> electricity. Or day, like, everything's going to be lit up, right? Oh, and they should reign forever. And ever, that's Revelation chapter 22, verse four through five. Forever and ever, ever, all right? This is gonna be a beautiful thing, right? This is for you, for you, oh my God. All right, so oh, imagine if it was a commercial showing all of that, all right? <laughs> you know what I mean? That would be just so cool, right? That it, showing all that it is and, and what it means and how could you imagine that? It was a song uh, by Mercy Me. You know, do y'all know the group Mercy Me? Okay, it's a song by Mercy Me, and uh, it's called, I Can Only Imagine. I Can Only Imagine. All right, we will, we will see Jesus' face, face to face when we get to heaven, right? We'll see God. We'll see all the people that we read about in the Bible, all right? And our family members, and just the thought of that is so beautiful when you go to heaven. So I, I often imagine about that moment. Like, what is it going to feel like seeing all of that? The ones that we love, that we know are in heaven, and we get to be with them again. And then we get to be with the love of our life, our heavenly father. You know what I mean? Oh, my God. This would be so awesome, right? All right. So I had this song in a worship mix. It was an evangelist that uh, gave me this song. And I just did this part. I was just bawling. You know, not tears of, like, sadness. Tears of joy because of this song. It's such a beautiful song. And it's called, um, you know, uh, I Can Only Imagine. So check this song out. I'm going to play a little bit. I'm gonna play a little bit for y'all so you can hear it. It's beautiful. <clears throat> and I want you to imagine just being with Jesus, seeing his face, you know? Being there in heaven, streets of gold, light. I can only imagine it will be like when I walk by your side. Mm. I can only imagine what my eyes will see when your face is before me. Hey. I can only imagine. Yeah. Woo. Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? That's what I'm talking about. You can only imagine. 
Go go on YouTube, go on iTunes, download the entire song because you will be crying at the end of it. You know what I mean? But it's like, it's this, you can feel the love in the song, right? And you can see them looking at, you know, family members and things like that. And knowing it's that peace, like them knowing that they're up there, you know what I mean? Because they love God while they were here. You know what I mean? And it's like, I just thinking about it, like me and Asia talk about it all the time, like praying together and, and, and loving one another here on earth and me and her loving Jesus and then heaven. You know what I mean? Like, it's just like a beautiful thing. As believers, we all have that connection to Christ, right? That connection. And he is the one that gets us to heaven. Jesus is the only way, right? Which is so beautiful, right? I, I wonder if there could be like, I don't know, like a highway to heaven. You know what I mean? Like a highway to heaven. Wouldn't that be cool? If a highway, you know, you just have a bad day and you're like, hey, I'm going to get on the highway to heaven and just, you know, I ain't got to deal with this. I'm going to go to heaven real quick. I'll be right back. I just need to go to meditate with Jesus <laughs> really quick, right? A highway to heaven. Now, back in the day, uh, in 1984, some of y'all weren't even born <laughs> right? And some of y'all parents probably weren't even born in 1984. But 1984, right? Uh, there was this television show called Highway to Heaven, right? And I used to watch a show. I wasn't, I wasn't growing in 84, but I was a little kid. I think I was, I'm trying to do the math, y'all. Uh, I probably about five. I think in 1984, I think five or six. I think that's the right name. All right, so uh, in 1984, and it was just uh, an awesome, awesome show, Highway to Heaven. Now, it starred Michael Landon, uh, and he played an angel. And he was walking on this highway. Now, Michael Landon, his whole point was, I want to come to earth because I want to help people. And I want to help people in need that are going through something that just needs a little bit of faith, right? I want to help them. And it's another character named Jonathan Smith that saw him on the road. He picked him up, right? And then he takes him to all these places that he needs to go to go help people. Of course, this is a fantasy not real, you know what I mean? But it was just a beautiful, beautiful show that really talked about faith, right? So uh, I wanna show you the beginning of that uh, television show. <clears throat> Long and an angel is just walking down the street. You pick them up and y'all just hang out, right? That is that's an awesome feeling, right? What if there was a highway to heaven? What if you could get on a highway? I don't know if y'all y'all don't have your license yet, but just you could walk like just walk down the street and be on this highway, go to heaven whenever you wanted to. Now, what if I told you? What if I told you that there is a highway to heaven? Hmm. What if I told you there is a highway to heaven? The highway to heaven is Jesus. Jesus is the highway to heaven. He is the way to heaven. He's the only way to get into heaven. That's how you do it. Like, like when we saw that Disney trailer, you could just walk in there and you need to have tickets, right? To walk into Disney. All the people that was happy and stuff like that, they had to go through some type of process where they had to get a ticket to be in there, right? Okay, and on the ticket, it might have had Donald on there and Goofy and, and all that stuff on there, right, to get in there. But they had tickets, right? You can enter heaven and see God behind the pearly gates because of Jesus. That's our ticket. That's our ticket. Jesus. Your highway to heaven is Jesus. Jesus is the highway. Everybody say Jesus is the highway. Jesus. To, heaven. to heaven. To heaven. Turn to John chapter 14, verse 6. John chapter 14, verse 6. <clears throat> and this is uh, Jesus talking. 
which is beautiful, all right? And I love this verse, and it's such an important verse. And when I started out being a, uh, in the beginning of my being a believer, this was the verse that spoke to me a lot. John chapter 14, verse 6. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. No one comes to the Father except through me. No one. Okay? You have to go bring Jesus into your heart. That is the way that you go to heaven. The highway to heaven is called Jesus. There is no other route one can take to God. <laughs> all right? It has to be Jesus. It has to be Jesus. Jesus is it. All right? Preparation starts with your faith. That's where the preparation starts. It starts with your faith in, your, in God. You know, your atoning work. You know, with believing in him. All right? Oh, man. Jesus Christ, who shed his blood for us. Today is Communion Sunday, right? So we're going to be talking about that a little bit later. But he, sled, he, he shed his blood for us, all right? For all mankind, for their sins, okay? So that way we don't have to go straight to hell. We can go to heaven and we can start our never-ending story with God. You see what I'm saying? Okay? Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am. I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am. I am the good shepherd. I am. I am the gate. I am the resurrection in this life. Whoa. Whoa. It's no other way into heaven. Okay? You can say, but I've been good, Pastor Kale. I've been good. I've been nice to people. I gave somebody some candy the other day. I was chilling. You know, I listened to somebody's conversation that I didn't really want to listen to because they just be talking. You know what I mean? I gave somebody a ride today. I, I, was, I smiled at somebody. Anything you might have done, you'd be like, man, I got good deeds. I do good things. Okay? That's fine. Continue to do your good deeds. Do godly deeds and do those things. But Jesus Christ is the only way to see and hear all that we talk about. And all I talked about earlier, that's the only way, is through Jesus Christ. You have to invite him into your heart, right? Okay, so turn to Ephesians chapter 2, uh, verse 8 through 9. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 through 9. Okay, and it says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works. So that no one should boast. All right? So what that means is you just can't be like, well, I'm going to get in heaven because of my works. Or these things are happening in my life because of what I did. Like when things happen in my life and people go, yo, congratulations, Kale. That's what's up. You did that. And I'm like, nah, God did that. What? You did it. You did it. You was the one that did all the work. No, but I was able to do the work because of God's love and grace that's inside of me. What is you talking about, man? I've literally watched you do it. I ain't seeing nothing. Look, God is in me. You don't see the time that I pray every day. I pray every night. I pray for this, you know, to happen in my life. That's what I was doing, you know? And then people started to go, well, wait a minute. Talk to me about this. And then you show them the commercial. You start using the words in the Bible. See what I'm saying? And that word is the commercial. That's where they go, yo, where's that place? It's like somebody had never heard about Disneyland or Disney World. And you tell them, it's these amazing rides. And Mickey comes out and talks to you. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's amazing. So imagine if you said, yo, it's this faith that you will have. You will wake up and you can turn away from sin. And you can get blessings and breakthroughs in your life. And you can get over the hard times in your life. What? How do I do that? Through Jesus Christ, let me show you how you do it. Man. Man, it's a blessing. Okay, turn to Acts chapter 4, verse 12. <clears throat> All right? <clears throat> I think I said that one earlier. Oh, no, no, I was 14. Acts chapter 4, verse 12. There is no salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Must be saved. No other name but Jesus. Jesus. Woo! Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. He is the only route to heaven. Oh, my God. That's awesome. Which brings me back to what we talked about earlier. OK, living a life that is of Christ, because you say YOLO, you know, only live once. Right. But you got to understand that's on earth. So you're preparing for the life you're going to live up in heaven. All right. Yes, we have one life on earth, but there is an eternal life after that in heaven. But we can have heaven on earth by the power of God working in us. Say, I got the power of God working in me. Amen. Y'all say it there too in your household, all right? All right, his love, his kindness providing blessings in my life, in your life. 
Jesus told us a way to pray. He gave us a certain way to pray in the Bible, right? Okay, so he says this. <clears throat> uh, this is, uh, I believe it's Matthew, okay? Yeah, 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 Matthew ch uh, uh, chapter 6. And I'm going to start at verse 9. <clears throat> pray then like this, all right? <laughs> He's literally telling you how to do it, right? He's saying, pray then like this. Every time Jesus do that, I listen up in the Bible because he's like literally telling us what to do, right? So pray then like this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Now here's what I was talking about. On earth, everybody say on earth, on earth. as it is in heaven. in heaven. Whoa, so that must mean there's a connection well, then now you're living for Christ. You can have heaven on earth, knowing that you're also going to go to heaven and live forever. But it starts now. It's, it's so many. It's, it's so deep where it's like some believers, they don't even understand that salvation starts now. So they just like living in the, like the, the uh, sin or craziness. Right. They go, ah, oh, well, this happened. This happened. Well, I'm going to just deal with it. But when I get to heaven, oh, that's going to be over. When I get to heaven, it's going to be all right. But down here, ooh, I can't stand it. Ugh. But when I get to heaven, no, 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 no. You can have that same love here. God, Jesus is in our heart, right? So you can have it here too. So you can say, I mean, I'm enjoying every moment. I'm learning from every mistake. I'm learning from every lesson. What are you trying to show me, Lord? Who do I need to help within this moment? Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. A never ending story. Here's the deepness about this though. We are to carry the kingdom of God. It's us, it's us with us everywhere we go and release the kingdom through everything we do. It's about us, okay? We are called by Jesus to bring heaven to earth. Now, when you think about it in that way, that's the deepness. By our actions, by our love, by what we're doing, we're showing people heaven on earth because Jesus is inside of us. So we are literally the commercial for them saying this is how it can be on heaven. I mean, in earth as it is in heaven, right? So you can have this, this faith. Now, I want to go back to 1984. Okay, let's go back there again. All right, 1984. Well, young Kale, little Kale, young Kale, loved watching a movie. And I love this movie so much. It's called The Never Ending Story. Okay, The Never Ending Story. If your parents have introduced you to this movie, tell them after this that Kale said they rock. All right, so right, all right. And if you haven't seen the movie, go see it. All right, it's an awesome, awesome movie. Y'all ain't seen it, go see it. It's called The Never Ending Story. All right, mm. okay, this is one of my favorite movies. On, the, I'm gonna give you the synopsis of the movie so you can understand what's happening. All right, that's the poster right there. Okay, it had flying dogs in it. It's a fantasy film, not a Christian movie, but it was still good for kids. It's PG. All right, so it had this amazing story. It was just, it was great. It was before CGI has taken over everything and everything looked like computers. They really made these like big dogs that he could fly on and all this stuff. Now I'm gonna read you the synops synopsis. On his way to school, Bastion ducks into a bookstore to avoid bullies. Sneaking away with a book called The Never Ending Story. Bastion begins reading it in the school attic. The novel is about Fantasia, a fantasy land threatened by the nothing, a darkness that destroys everything it touches. The kingdom needs the help of a human child to survive. When Bastion reads a description of himself in the book, he begins to wonder if Fantasia is real and needs him to survive. Now, this part of the movie was so cool to me. Imagine you are reading a book. You read a book. Then you see your name in the pages. You see yourself in the pages and it pops up you have to keep reading it to see what happens next what and you in the story are somehow connected you in the story as believers that sounds very familiar huh sounds very familiar right okay the word of god is living it's living right Okay, that's what we that's what we learn as believers. It's living. That's what we should know, right? So turn to Hebrews. Hebrews chapter four, verse twelve. Hebrews chapter four, verse twelve. <clears throat> Woo! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Amen. God is awesome. All right. So it says, "For the word of God is alive 
and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart, okay? It has been said that if we read the written word with faith, right, with faith, then it begins to read us, <laughs> all right? Nothing is hidden from God. Nothing's hidden from God. Nothing about our own motives, our own desires, our own hearts is hidden from the word of God, okay? So, though it is hidden from ourselves in the beginning part, right? God is alive and active, so his word is alive and active. Get that? Y'all might want to write that down. God is alive and active, all right? So his word is alive and active. Our hearts are laid bare before his word, his truth, and his understanding, Okay, and so when people get that understanding, it's like you got a key, the keys to life, the key to heaven. You know what I mean? It's like DJ Khaled. I got the keys, keys, keys. I got the keys. You get the keys to heaven, right? So turn to Matthew uh, chapter 16, verse 19. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 16, verse 19. <clears throat> All right. Now, this is what Jesus tells his disciples. Remember, I told you when we were talking about Disney World, Disneyland, and how we get the keys. And now you think about the Never Any Story movie, right? And think about the book. And he, Sebastian, saw himself in the book. So you see yourself within the Bible. You see yourself within the Word. You are connected to the Word because it's breathing life into you, all right? So, Matthew chapter 16, verse 19 I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Yo, that's the connection, right? Okay, everything on earth. You can bring heaven to earth. Your salvation starts now. No matter what job you work, God wants to bring the kingdom to earth through you, through you, okay? Us as believers and us being here and us being honest and us being honest about our faith and us talking about God and being unashamed and doing all of that, that is bringing heaven to earth and for others, right? To say, yo, I'm about this. I want to get into that life, right? Ask the Holy Spirit. I want you to do this. Ask the Holy Spirit to teach you how to bring heaven to earth today. Ask them how to do it, right? Because all of us were born for a reason. I tell y'all that all the time. I tell my kids that all the time. You're born for a reason. You're born for a purpose. And my purpose while I was born might be different than what the purpose God has for you. You know what I mean? It's We all have a different purpose, but it's all for the glory of God, right? So I want y'all to do that. It's very important. Y'all watching too. Ask the Holy Spirit to teach you how to bring heaven to earth today. When you read the Bible, see yourself like Bastion saw himself in the Never Ending Story book, when you read the Bible, see yourself in the pages. You know, like Pastor, sometimes he'll go, okay, you, see, you heard me do that verse, but now put your name in it, right? Yeah, he'll say, put your name in it. That's literally you seeing yourself in it because Jesus is talking to us within these stories. God is talking to us. The prophets are talking to us. Paul was talking to us because we're believers, so they're trying to give us encouragement to keep going while we're on earth. That's what it's all about. Woo! It's a never-ending story with God. Yes, YOLO, you only live once on earth, but you live forever in heaven, and you're, it starts right now, all right? So, back to the never-ending story, right? Uh, it was a theme song in this 1984 film that I love so much, and if you uh, love the never-ending story like I do, uh, you would know this song, right? Uh, you said you've seen it, right? Seen it before? Okay, okay, cool. Okay, so the title had the same name. of The song the title had the same name. It's called The Never-Ending Story, right? And if you ever watch Stranger Things, have you ever <laughs> watched that or seen that? Everybody's like, yeah, I've seen that. Okay, so in season three of Stranger Things, when the monster was running out there, everybody, uh, the, one of the young ladies told... The, uh, the, the little boy with the hat, right, with the curly hair, told him to sing this song. And they had to sing it together, right, within the song, all right? So this was an awesome moment because it was like an ode to a Never Ending Story, right, uh, from 1984, okay? Now, I'm going to start in the middle of this song, right? But I'm going to play a little bit, and then I'm going to talk about the lyrics of this song, all right? So check it out. Here's a little bit of this song. Oh, man, it's making me go to YouTube. Okay, never mind. I'm going to sing it. Y'all ready for my voice? Okay. I'm going to sing, y'all. Don't laugh at me. Okay. So, all right. So, I'm going to start in the middle. <clears throat> okay. Let me see if I can. Because this is the middle of the verse. Okay. All right. Okay. 
Make believe I'm everywhere, giving in the light. Written on the pages is the answer to our never-ending story. Oh, 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 and then they go, reach the stars, fly a fantasy, dream a dream, and what you see will be. Rhymes that keep their secrets will unfold behind the clouds. Come on. In there upon a rainbow is the answer to our never-ending story. Oh. Okay. <clears throat> there it is. All right. Thank you. Thank hey. Yes. Yes. Never-ending story. Okay. So... This is the song that's in it. The song in Stranger Things, and then it's also uh, in Never Ending Story, which is such a beautiful thing. Now, okay, written in the pages of the Bible, these words give us life. God's love encourages us and saves us, and we are made new, okay? You live forever in heaven, and you bring heaven on earth. When we go to heaven, our story of faith, worship that we have for God continues forever. No sickness, no pain, a never-ending story of God's love. So in that song, it says, make believe I'm everywhere. Okay? God is everywhere. All right? Giving in the light. We talked about the light in heaven, but there's no darkness in heaven. It's always light. Let's say it's giving in the light, the light, the light of this world, the Lamb, Jesus. 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 So when we invite the light into our hearts, okay, now we have that same light. Okay? <laughs> the answer to our never-ending story is in the pages of the Bible. In his word, okay? Fly a fantasy, dream a dream. What do you dream of? What, what, what desires do you have? Jesus has put that in your heart, okay? There are secrets of this world that people don't know about when they have a stone heart. We talked about that. When they don't say accept Jesus, when they don't accept the faith, the love, and they don't know the secrets that are here for us, that Jesus designed us to worship him, to love him, and he also wants us to have a blessed life, okay? Right? But you all know. And that's what's so awesome about it, all right? The answer to your never-ending story, and then all you have to do is put it here, with God, <laughs> is in the pages of the Bible and the word that gives us life. Hallelujah. Okay, 1 John chapter 4, verse 7 through 21. <clears throat> now, I want to tell y'all how this really, really works, all right? Okay, because God is love. God is love. And if God is love then we must be love, right? Okay, so this is how this goes, right? <clears throat> First John chapter four, verse seven through 21. Are oh, they talking about my singing in here? <laughs> they like, <to. laughs> all right, all right, thank you. All right, First John chapter four, verse seven through 21. <clears throat> God is love, y'all. God is love. Beloved, let us love one another for love is from God. And whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Okay, so you know God, okay? All right, you know him. Woo, hallelujah. <clears throat> Anyone who does not love does not know God because God is love. And this, the love of God was made manifest among us that God sent his only son into the world, into the world, mm, so that we might live through him. And this is love. Not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the preparation for our sins. All right. So just think about it this way. Right. He did that for us. He was the one that took away our sins. Right. Woo. He was the one like he was the sacrifice. He sacrificed for us and battered, bruised, beaten, went to hell, came back, rose again. You know, a lot of people believe a lot of things, but they're, they're, who they believe has not been rose again. You know what I mean? Uh, Jesus died and rose again. Died and rose again for us. Beloved, oh, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. That's the deep part right there. You got to love everybody. Love everybody. No one has ever seen God. We talked about that earlier. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God abides in us. Okay. Now, this is the part I want to show you because we're talking about bringing heaven to earth. 
right? So if you, if the person that you're trying to reach through faith, right, and trying to introduce them to a new world, this secret, this never any story that we all have with God, but no one has ever seen God, right? Disney World, all that stuff. You can see Mickey. He all on the cartoons, right? You know, and all that stuff, right? You can see him. So you can say, man, he got a place. Disney World, right? So you're saying this place is heaven, right? And what God can do in your life and what Jesus has done in our life, right? But they don't see God, right? So if we love one another, God abides in us. His love is perfected in us. It's through our actions and how we respond in our faith. If they feel the Holy Spirit within us, they feel the God's love that's in us and it touches their hearts. That's what it's all about, changing your heart. That's what it's all about, y'all. So we're about to have communion right now, right? Which is awesome for this, to this because the Lord gave me this message. And then Asia was like, hey, you know, it's communion Sunday today. And I was like, oh man, this is beautiful. Like I'm literally talking about communion, you know, within this story of having this never ending story with God, right? So uh, Eric is going to pass out um, uh, our communion, all right? And as he does that, I'm going to talk to all of y'all, right? Because uh, everyone here has invited Jesus into their heart. But if you haven't online and you're watching this and you just happen to come on here uh, because maybe you saw me promote it, but I want you to know that you need Jesus in your heart to start this never ending story with God and to see heaven, right? And to have heaven on earth. So repeat after me if that's you. Oh yes, hey, thank you Thanks so much. <laughs> yeah. Uh, say these words, repeat after me. I believe that Jesus died on the cross and rose again. I believe that Jesus was God in the flesh. Jesus, as my Lord and high priest, I invite you into my heart. You are Lord and Savior of everything I do. And today, I am saved. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If you did that, DM us. I want you to DM us and let us know. And we're going to send you more information because now your story starts now. Your tomorrow <laughs> Woo, starts today, right? You just started right now with you doing that. But it's other things you're going to have to know about because the enemy is going to try to stop you from believing. But you don't stop believing. You know what's hidden behind the clouds now, just like in the stone. You know the secrets right now, right? You know that your heavenly father will bless you through everything. So you don't have to worry anymore, right? Hallelujah. That's what you know right now. Okay? Woo! Oh, now, if you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit, if you want to be baptized, hit us up, my spirit food, all right? But now, listen, the Holy Spirit is beautiful because when Jesus came back, right, after he died and rose again, he came back and he spoke to his disciples, right? And he did that, and he told them, I'm going to leave you with the Holy Spirit to comfort you as you speak about the gospel, as you let people know about bringing you know, heaven to earth, right? Because you're going to be, you know, going up against things and trouble of this world. So this will comfort you and tell you which way to go. So you could see these staircases and the way and the way to get to certain things and blessings in your life. And people would think you have some type of cheat code. You know what I mean? But you're blessed. All right. You're blessed, right? Blessed mode. Go get them blessings, right? So, all right. I want you to repeat after me to invite the Holy Spirit in your life, right? <clears throat> okay. Are you already giving your life to Christ? You've been baptized, right? And now you want the Holy Spirit in your, in your heart, right? Now, you want to be filled, all you have to do is ask. Just repeat after me. Say, Heavenly Father, you said that if I ask, that you would fill me with the Holy Spirit. So today, I'm asking to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And when I ask, I know immediately that I am filled and I will speak your holy tongue. I will speak like you want me to speak. Woo. Now breathe in, breathe out. And say, I'm filled with the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. I'm filled with the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. I'm filled with the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. I'm filled with the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. I receive the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. I receive the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your tongue starts moving. Just let it go. Let it move. Let it move. Continue letting it move. Let it move. Hallelujah. That's the Holy Spirit working in your life. Hallelujah. 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 Woo. Thank you, Jesus. These are the keys. These are the keys. When we talk about the key to heaven, Jesus is the highway to heaven. All right. This is what we're talking about. All right, y'all. This is what we're talking about. Now, we're going to have communion. Communion. And I wanted to do that first so the ones that haven't invited Jesus in their heart could do it and then have an opportunity to do this with us. All right. So we're about to have communion right now.
right? And turn to Corinthians chapter 11, verse 24. <clears throat> I want you to understand why you're doing this. <clears throat> and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant <laughs> in my blood. Do this. Whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So this is a celebration of what he did for us. This is a party. That's why I played the song earlier by George Rose, where he's talking about, it's a party. So every day you wake up should be a party. You know, demons are fleeing when you wake up in the morning. They like, yeah, he up, she up. Because they know you love the Lord, right? They know you love the Lord. And so you have that light on you everywhere you go, everywhere you walk. So they can't touch you, right? So look inside your heart right now before partaking in this communion, all of y'all, right? And I want you to say, give me a clean heart. Yeah, I heard that. Give me a clean heart, right? I want you to have a clean heart. I want you to forgive yourself, forgive others, all right? Because you got to know that you have the victory. So start just forgiving people right now. now. I don't care what happened this week. It's gone. It's a whole new day today. You know what I mean? So, you know, I talk about that all the time. If you had a bad day or stuff was kind of crazy, all right? It's the end of that day now, all right? You know what I mean? And now it's a new day. So you woke up. This is the morning time. And every day we have a chance to renew our mind and renew ourselves, right? So I want you to say clean. Give me a clean heart. Woo. Clean heart. Give me a clean heart, okay? So communion is an intimate part of both worship and fellowship with Christ. All right, so when we talked about heaven earlier and having this never ending story with God, you know you're going to be worshiping God up there. It's like when you did it, man, at like 24-7, you're going to be worshiping God. So you might as well get in touch with it right now. You know what I mean? It's going to be like communion every day. You know what I mean? We're just going to get up loving the Lord, worshiping the Lord, woo, speaking in tongues, all of that. Oh, man, it's going to be awesome. So communion is our opportunity to stay intimately connected with Christ. Woo! All right? And the significance of his sacrifice for us on the cross. All right? Him loving us. And you're going and saying, I love you too, Lord. All right? So what I want you to do, I want you to hold up the communion and say, thank you, Jesus, Woo, for what you did on the cross. I remember. I love you, Lord. Woo! And thank you for what you're doing in my life right now. No sin, no disease, no hurt, no pain Woo, will stop me from getting to the dreams that you've put in my heart. Oh, Heavenly Father, I ask you right now to come into my household, take away the hate, take away the pain, any generational curses, that is in my family is gone right now in the name of Jesus. Ooh, hallelujah. I love you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now eat the bread. Mmm. Mmm. Say thank you, Jesus. <laughs> uh, drink the blood. Mmm. Say thank you, Lord. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Jesus is awesome. Jesus is awesome. Oh, man. All right. So if you want to be able to give a tithe, uh, give an offering, we want to have that opportunity right now. Uh, we have an app, the Push Pay app. We want to make sure that everybody's around the world because people watch us all over and, uh, and could be on vacation and things like that. And they want to be able to give their tithe and give their offering. And giving a tithe is very important. Helping out the kingdom of heaven. You know what I mean? Oh, thanks so much. Thank you. Hallelujah. All right. So I want you to text MYSFCC to 833-245-7382. And you'll be able to give your offering. You'll be able to give your tithe. Uh, and you'll see uh, the Push Pay app. So once again, text MYSFCC to 833-245-7382. Oh, man. Oh, man. This has been awesome. This has been awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this has been awesome. God is amazing. He's amazing. You are amazing. Today, you're going to have a blessed week. Blessed week because you kicked it off. 
with just saying, Lord, I, I want to take you everywhere. I want to take you everywhere I go. All right? So remember that. Remember I told y'all that. Take them in school. Take them in the hallways. Take them in your house. Take them everywhere you go. You want to have Jesus with you every day. All right. So uh, anybody want to pray us out? Anybody want to pray us out? Anybody want to pray? Want to pray? Want to pray? Pray? Come on. Want to pray? Want to pray? All right. You, you sure? Look like you want to. Okay, okay, okay. All right, I'll do it. I'll do it. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, uh, I just thank you right now for everyone that is sitting here right now and everyone that is watching online. Ooh, I pray right now that you give them breakthrough. Oh, breakthrough, a spiritual breakthrough. And I want them to connect to their spiritual self. I want them to connect to you. I want them to bring you in everywhere they go in their life, at their school, in their job, in their career, in their family, Woo, everywhere. And let them be a mouthpiece, an ambassador for heaven. And I ask right now that everybody here is unashamed, unashamed to say, Woo, I love you, Lord. They're just going to say, I love you, Lord, no matter what. And it won't let any enemy, let any hater stop them for giving you praise. We give you praise. We give you honor right now. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 I'm going to say goodbye to everybody on here. Thank you all for joining in. We're going to continue in here. Uh, if you ever want to join us live, we here. We here. We live. We over here at Spirit Food Christian Center. So come through and join us. All right. I love y'all. Y'all have a blessed week. Hallelujah.